να καλέσουμε τον κύριο μιλητή μας, τον κύριο Οικονομίδη, για τον οποίο δεν θέλω να πω πάρα πολλά πράγματα, ένας υπέροχος άνθρωπος, μεγάλες γνώσεις και ελπίζω να απολαύσουμε την ομιλία του με όλες αυτές τις εμπειρίες που έχει να μας φέρει. Ε, καλημέρα σας. Ε, λέγομαι Οικονομίδης, γεννήθηκα στην Νότια Αφρική, έχω ζήσει ανά τον κόσμο και έχω διαλέξει να ζω στην Ελλάδα γιατί το αγαπάω πάρα πολύ. Δυστυχώς τα ελληνικά μου δεν είναι σε μια επίπεδο που μπορώ να δώσω όλη την ομιλία μου ειδικά με θέματα σαν branding, πώς θα πούμε το branding και γι' αυτό έχω την ανάγκη να περάσω στα αγγλικά. Συγγνώμη. Uh, Mr. Lambinopoulos Lambinopoulos said incredibly smart words. Is it rebranding Greece or is it rebranding Greeks? He said it all. And he added to that that the brand is made up of individuals. We're not selling a tube of toothpaste. I will be referring, by the way, to soft drinks and to computers and to toothpaste perhaps during my talk this morning, that's not to say that I think that countries can be compared to these things, but I do think there are big lessons to be learnt from the branding principles that are applied to these products that we can take back into branding the nation. Before getting into my slides, I just want to say the following thing that I think this is the most timely conference that I could possibly imagine. We've been through a wild roller coaster ride during the past two weeks. It's been unbelievable. And to be here today to talk about image is the perfect timing because this might, have, this might be an economic crisis, but the way out of it is going to be to solve the image crisis, the reputation crisis, the how we feel about ourselves as Greeks crisis. This is what's got to be dealt with. I, I, saw some, I saw some interesting numbers yesterday, and I promise you there will be just two charts in this presentation, nothing more. We're all used to seeing these figures up here, that we've got the highest public sector debt in the world. By the way, these numbers are for 2010. And close behind us is Italy, Belgium, Ireland, the USA, Hungary, Kitalipa. By the way, France is number seven. Um, we, we've all seen these numbers. But what I saw yesterday was quite amazing. This over here is a, a credit risk uh, report put out by UBS. And these are the 19 countries most likely to default. And instead of just focusing on public sector debt, which has been the real focus up to now, they're looking at the credit to GDP ratio, in other words, the cumulative credit outstanding in the society, right? The loans to deposits ratios in the banking system, plus public sector debt to come up with a risk index. I remind you, this is UBS, okay? Number one, Ireland. Number two, Portugal. Number three, Spain. Number four, Greece. Number five, ladies and gentlemen, the United Kingdom. Hungary, Denmark. Denmark's got a remarkable loans to deposits ratio of, a, of 346%. And you get on that list, you get Denmark, France, Belgium, Sweden, the Netherlands, Bulgaria, etc. Italy, by the way, on this list is number 14. It's clear that this crisis is way bigger than Greece. But we have become the poster child. We've become the bad kids. And I agree with Mr. Lambrinopoulos. We are to blame for that. And I keep saying this, we are to blame. Brand is what people think of you. Nothing more, nothing less. That's all it is. Everything is a brand. Whether you are aware of it or not, each one of us has got our brand. Very different to brand is branding. Because branding is the process of managing your brand. In other words, it's the process of managing what people think of you. Very different. Greece is one of the greatest brands that's never 
been branded. We've spent millions over the years in promoting tourism. We have not been branding Greece. We have not been managing what people think of us. He has a statement from Valery Giscard d'Estaing, which he made last year, I think it was the beginning of May. He said, Europe without Greece is like a child without a birth certificate. And by the way, that's exactly what Europe feels at heart. The world knows that. A few weeks later, Focus comes out with this cover, which says, fraudsters in the Euro family. Exactly the same image that I've got on my previous slide, except this time it's making a different kind of gesture. Two things to notice about this. Number one, we're fraudsters. Number two, we're now the Euro family. No longer the mother, the Euro family. Delegation. We've been relegated. And then I've got this remarkable image from last week. Have a look at the body language. And the statement there, Greece is something we can live without. And that's a statement from the French Minister for European Affairs. That's a big move. That's a huge move. So the question that we've got to put to ourselves is, how do we move from where we were into what we've become and back to where we were? Can we do it? We are Greeks. We have the power to imagine. And now it is time to imagine the future. I've told you I'm going to refer to a couple of consumer products. My intention is not to suggest that we could be spoken about like computers, but branding is all about psychology, it's all about sociology, it's all about anthropology, and all those things. There are lessons to be learned from the great brands. I've had the good fortune to work on some of the best brands in the world. One of them was Apple Computer. I was part of the team which did the relaunch of Apple Computer in 1997. And at the time, Apple was almost bankrupt. They'd become irrelevant. Their machines were expensive, they were slow, and nobody saw the need to even think about Apple. Their shares at the time were trading at $5 on the stock exchange. Today, it's the world's second most valuable corporation. That took 14 years. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. The troublemakers. The round pegs in the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Let's be crazy. I keep switching to the wrong thing. Uh, Steve Jobs was the best client I've ever worked with. He passed away a couple of weeks ago. Rest in peace, genius. How did we do this? We dipped deep into Apple DNA to reignite the flame, to create belief. We spoke about the why. By the way, there was no what at the time. There were no iMacs, there were no iPhones. There were slow, gray machines that were expensive. That's all there was. 
But we came out with that advertising. The how and the what came later in the form of iMac, iPod, iTunes, iPhones, and iPad. And the company became the second most valuable company in the world. But it started with the why. And the why is about the crazy ones. Greece has richer DNA than any nation on earth. Greece is the heart, the soul, and the spirit of the Mediterranean. Greece needs to own this. Greece, Greece needs to express this. Greece needs to inspire and be inspired by this. And as Mr. Lambinopoulos said, that word should be Greeks need to inspire and be inspired by this. Here are some images from this very beautiful country. We've got lots of beaches like this. We sell them very well. We sell them very well in our tourism campaigns. We've got incredible monuments. We sell those very well. And overriding all of this is an image of Greece which was born in the 60s. Zorba. Zorba is a problem. Zorba is a problem. He's Dionysus. And the Germans, who are far more Apollonian than we are, have got a problem today with Dionysus. Because the guy they love, Yanis, Dimitris, Alexis, whatever his name might be, that they've all met on islands throughout Greece, who might have overcharged them for a coffee, is suddenly a thief and he's lazy. We need to park Zorba. We need to put him on the side, not get rid of him. He's part of our joy for life. We need to put him aside. He has a problem right now. He has an issue. We need to be a little more Apollonian. That's the image that Greece presents to the world. That's Greece's logo, which by the way, we've changed 14 times since 1990. That makes me crazy. 14 times we've changed our logo. 16 times we've changed our campaign. And my question is, why do we need to do it every year? I think we can all suspect what the answer might be. That has got to stop. Brands do not get built in that way. Apple has never changed its logo, nor is Coca-Cola, by the way, ever. By the way, this logo, I don't know if you know this, those nine circles around there represent the nine strategies of EOT. There's conventions, there's agro-tourism, there's archaeology, there's beaches. Who cares? Is that consumer-driven? I mean, what kind of thinking is this? Whoever designed that should be shot. And whoever approved it should shoot him, and then we should just bury them both. It's ridiculous. Seriously now. Let's get real. By the way, whilst we do that kind of stuff, this is what our friends do. Istanbul, the most inspiring city in the world, with an image which draws you in, which starts to tell you a story, which says to you, once upon a time, and makes you want to go in and discover it. And it says, Istanbul Inspirations, brilliant work. Something else our friends do, in every single piece of advertising that they do, television advertising, you'll find that image from Hagia Sophia. Why? Remember what I said about ourselves, we're the heart and the soul of the Mediterranean. Our friends are taking some of that away from us, because that's part of our heritage. Croatia, brilliant. The Mediterranean as it once was. What does that mean? Greece as it once was. That's what it means. That's exactly what it means. The result of this, by the way, if, if this kind of chart was shown inside Microsoft or Coca-Cola or Apple or any other company, if this was a company, whoever was responsible for that would get fired. The market has doubled, our share has halved. Is this success? Is this success? Turkey has now got 53% of 51 million tourists in 2010, whereas we had 50% of 25 million in 2000. Is this success? That's failure. Big time. Big time. It's time to reset. What is a brand? 
Can we talk about a nation as a brand? A brand is nothing more than the set of impressions that lives in people's heads. That is what a brand is. Nothing more. Your head, my head, everyone's head. Everything communicates. Everything you say, everything you don't say, everything you do, everything you don't do, everything that happens to you, and everything that does not happen to you, absolutely everything communicates. And I wish Mr. Samaras and Mr. Papandreou would have realized that. You can't have two kids bickering in front of the world. It communicates. It builds impressions. If it builds impressions, it builds brand. Very simple stuff. It's easy. It's not difficult. Branding is the process of managing impressions. Different game. Strong brands create strong and consistent impressions. It should be the ambition of every brand to be the protagonist of its category. Every brand. If I show you that image, what do you think of? Anybody thirsty? Sorry? Beer? Beer? A red can? Coca-Cola. What's the Coca-Cola of cigarettes? Sorry? Marlboro. What's the Marlboro of vodka? Who said Smirnoff? Who says, who says absolute? Hands? I'll go with absolute. The absolute of sports shoes? No, there's agreement there. The Nike of coffee shops? Starbucks? The Starbucks of small city cars? The smart of beer? Bad? Heineken. The Heineken of computers. We'll leave, we'll leave Mr. Stichter out of that for a second. Apple, do we agree? All right, what's the apple of the Mediterranean? Can I hear you please? Thank you. Sorry to disappoint you. By the way, I'm not saying that. That's the cover of Liberación last week. That's the cover of Liberación. One of the largest circulating French newspapers ran that with Greek characters. But it, yes, it is Greece, for God's sake. Let's fix it. Google. Google is in everybody's life. And I'm going to use Google as a bit of a brand barometer. Because on Google, people go and they search for things, and let's see what kind of results come up when they ask certain things of Google. First thing, Acropolis. 17.6 million results, if by the way, in 0.24 seconds, remarkable. Ancient Greece, 15.7 million results. Mykonos, 3.35 million results in 0.19 seconds. Zorba. 29.5 million. Greece crisis, 62.1. Greece corruption, 24.4. Greece riots, 9.7. That's our image. That's our image. This is not scientific research, but it's pretty good indication, I can tell you that. That's it. That's what's sitting in people's heads. Those are the images, the pictures that accompany that. It's not pretty. Vanity Fair, I don't know who read that article. It's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's about uh, Vatopedi and the, uh, the, uh, the, the scandals. This is how we're selling tourism against a beautiful backdrop, nice room to rent, good price. Special, frappe, only eight euros. <laughs> Special, with ice, very good problem. Stop selling tourism and start managing impressions. We've got to learn how to do this. We have to. We have to. We've got to manage our image out of this crisis. We've got to change the mindscape. We have to do it. 
It's not easy, but we have to do it. We've got to create different dots. And once we've created those dots, we've got to connect the dots to create a universally powerful, motivating, cohesive, consistent, and compelling narrative which guides behavior and shapes image. We have to do it. By the way, that's what branding is. It's connecting dots. We have to have all these thoughts that 11 million people have got, 11 million Greeks have got, about who we are, where we come from, where we are going, why we do what we do and how we do it, has to be connected. So it becomes 11 million people in community and not in 11 million individuals all pulling in different directions, which we know is the characteristic of the society. It needs a common brand narrative. We need to tell the same story to each other and to our children so we all get it, the same story. By the way, we started telling stories over time. In 1986, there was a brilliant campaign, I'm Going Home to Greece, where there were foreigners, like Peter Ustinov, saying, my parents came from the Ukraine, they immigrated to the US, I'm going home to Greece. There's a narrative, I get it. George Lois, by the way, is a Greek-American legend in advertising. I myself worked on something in 1991, 1993, chosen by the gods. The favorite line that I wrote was at the bottom there, thank God she left the light on. Let's not switch the light off. Let's not switch it off. The best narrative of all, and I saw you smiling when you saw those images in that video, was Athens 2004. It was brilliant. It connected the past with the present, with the future. It gave vision. It gave Greece a role in the modern world. We felt good. And what do we do? We convert the IBC, the International Business Center, into a shopping mall. We had the best broadcast center in the world. We converted it into a shopping mall so people can go broke buying Gucci. Crazy. Now, what a nation thinks and feels determines what the world thinks and feels. It's like an iceberg. People look at the top, but what the top looks like depends on what the bottom is all about. This is Greeks at the bottom, to Mr. Lambinopoulos' point. And these things connect with each other. Because if I think that the world thinks that I'm silly, I feel silly. If I think that the world thinks I'm a crook, I kind of accept my role as a crook. These things are interconnected. The real work happens underneath the water. Because I remind you, everything communicates. I studied economics, shouldn't surprise you the name like Economides, but I've learned that social psychology is what drives human behavior. Economics is simply the score. So I say screw economics. When people feel great, they do great things. We gotta feel great. We have to speak to Greeks, to the diaspora, to Philippines. We've got a lot of friends around the world. We've got to use diplomatic channels. We've certainly got to talk to the media. We've got to use distributors, distributors of the travel product, of the investment product, of the coming living Greece product, of every product. We need to work with these people to get the right image emerging at the top. Brand is community. We are not toothpaste. And community is brand. There's some new models happening around the world. Branding is no longer the role of the minister of culture in most countries in the world. It is a public-private partnership it is usually under private sector leadership. It has corporate participation. It has community involvement. It's para. It's not one guy who's going to save the world. It doesn't work like that. And I'm going to give you some examples. There's brand licensing as well. I did this work for Seychelles. It was done by a public-private corporation. Government bureaucracy cannot allow this kind of work to come out. It's too risky for them. 
discoveramerica.com, the US is now going with a public-private cooperative. This is their website. Welcome to Brand USA, a public-private partnership with a mission of promoting increased international travel to the United States. The days of EOT and GNTO and that kind of stuff, mm -mm, doesn't work. Canada. Canada is harnessing the power of individual private corporations. Look at this video. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm not a lumberjack or a fur trader, and I don't live in an igloo or eat blubber or own a dog sled, and I don't know Jimmy, Sally, or Susie from Canada, although I'm certain they're really, really nice. Uh, I have a prime minister, not a president. I speak English and French, not American, and I pronounce it about, not a boot. I can proudly sew my country's flag on my backpack. I believe in peacekeeping, not policing, diversity, not assimilation, and that the beaver is a truly proud and noble animal. A toot is a hat, a Chesterfield is a coach, and it is pronounced Z, not Z, Z. Canada is the second largest land mass, the first nation of hockey, and the best part of my name is Joe, and I am Canadian! Thank you. I would love to see some of our big brands doing this kind of work. I am Greek. We all are Greek. One of the most brilliant pieces of work is India. India involves everybody in what they're doing. This is a website where there are competitions, school competitions, competitions for designers, all sorts of stuff. Parea. This is something I am doing for our friends down in Cyprus. I'm rebranding the city of Limassol right now, and I'm doing it on Facebook. Facebook. Involving the whole city. Everybody's involved. That's where it should be. Back to Steve Jobs, he said, simple is harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple. My biggest frustration as a branding guy is that every client of mine, because the work finally comes out looking simple, he thinks that he can do it himself. It's not like that. It's difficult to be simple. It's difficult. That is the most difficult thing in the world. By the way, something else, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. I feel that we have a tendency in this country to pay peanuts and we get monkeys doing work for us. Got to stop. We need the best. It's difficult work. Uh, in conclusion, we're living through defining moments in our history. I have absolutely no disillusion about that. These are defining moments. Our future is right now in our hands. Very important times. And I really do believe that image is the way out of this. It's part of the way out of this. We have to feel good about ourselves to do good things. And let's not forget something. It's a small moment in a long and glorious history. It's a small little point. That's all it is. History will look back and laugh at this. I know it's not funny right now, but it's going to be funny. Let's make it look funny at some point. Our future rests in our hands because we are Greeks. We have the power to imagine and now it is time to imagine our future. And I want to read to you an excerpt from my blog. It says, Greece is on the verge of bankruptcy, but we are not a bankrupt nation. We are Greeks, people with the power to imagine, people with the intelligence to turn imagination into reality. We imagined democracy. We imagined the Acropolis. Now it's time to imagine the future. Thank you.